What's going on, everybody? You are listening to On Air with JT. Uh, today is Saturday, and it's going to be like a really short episode. But uh, I just wanted to do like this cool kind of... I, I think it's kind of cool. I just wanted to go over a lot of the predictions for certain artists that I made, especially in the past three years, um, that have come true. Um, a lot of uh, well, for a, lo- a couple of the artists, I have actual physical proof, um, like time stamped, like years before they actually blew up and made it. Um, a few of the other artists, I don't have the proof, but I mean, I have no reason to lie. It's not like I'm saying I predicted like Eminem success, but um, I was going over the list and I'm very impressed. Um, at first, first of all, I feel like a record label needs to hire me as an A&R, an artist and representative, um, or a, some kind of scout, talent scout, talent agent, something. Because I definitely have an ear and an eye for, for talent. Um, there's no doubt about that. So the people that I knew, and these are all artists that never... I, I knew that they were going to make it, and I predicted that... Predicted that they were going to really blow up on a mainstream level all before they did. So the first one is Portugal the Man. Um, I was a little late to Portugal the Man. Um, I didn't hear their music until actually one of my favorite songs of all time, Sleep Forever, was featured in an episode of Shameless. And I believe that was back in 2013 or 2014. possibly 2013 and when I heard that song I mean obviously this was four years before even though that they might have recorded feel it still feel it still wasn't even on the radar wasn't even on the radio no one heard it unless you were in the band or a family friend or whatever um, of a band member I I knew that they were gonna have one day blow up and have a hit song and you know, sure enough, in 2017, they come out with their album and Feel It Still blew the fuck up to the point where they actually won uh, a Grammy in 2017, 2018. And it's such a crazy full circle moment because this year I was able to not only have over, you know, 10, 15 conversations with John Gurley the lead singer songwriter of Portugal the man himself but they follow me on Instagram we DM and talk about Damian Lillard and uh, I gave him recommendations of an artist he should work with and uh, I, I've had the opportunity to interview him for 25 minutes if you guys haven't heard that interview I highly recommend just typing in Portugal the man interview on air with JT John Gurley really great interview John I was a little nervous because, I mean, again, what a weird full circle moment. You know, back in 2013, I heard Sleep Forever, which if you haven't heard Portugal the Man Sleep Forever, go listen to it. It's a fucking amazing song from the lyrics to just every sound of, of that song is just perfection. Um, one of my favorite songs of all time. And, and again... Um, I'm forever grateful on how humble they are, you know, especially after having a massive hit song. I mean, that just that song just hit over 300 million uh, views on YouTube a couple weeks ago. Uh, It's just crazy that now I'm talking to them and they know who I am now. You know, even though it's almost 10 years later, you know, seven, eight years later, it's just a very cool moment. And the awesome thing about that is I'm actually having my second and third interview with Portugal the Man. Um, March 11th is with Zachary, and March 12th is with Eric of Portugal the Man. So we have three total interviews that are going to be with Portugal the Man, different members that will have come out next week um, within the last two months or so. So again, forever grateful. I mean, they just did an interview with Rolling Stone, and now they're about to do two more interviews with me. So um, thank you, Portugal the Man. Um, And again, just to reiterate, I'm not saying I know everything. I'm not saying that 
you know, if they didn't have Feel It Still, they wouldn't have had another hit song. I just knew that they had more potential. And I... It, and they they've been around for a long time. They have they ha- even had songs that were pretty popular um, prior to me making that prediction. But they never made it to that. They never made it to top forty. And I knew that they would make it to top forty Billboard. I know that they would chart. I just knew. I had a feeling. I just knew it. And it happened. And it was a cool moment when I, especially even a couple years ago, way before I even had the interviews with them and talked to them, and hearing that on the radio, I'm like, holy shit. Like, I, I really predicted this. And I actually have um, a timestamp from my Instagram archive of um, 2018, or was it 2017? I'm like, holy shit, I, predict, I predicted their success in 2014. I thought it was 2013, but whatever. So yeah, uh, shout out to Portugal. The man, they make amazing music. The second one is Jack Harlow. Um, I heard Jack Harlow back in the summer of 2018, and once I heard one of his songs, I knew that he was going to be the next big white rapper in the game. Um, his flow, his writing, his style is just um, very unique. It's very Kentucky, and but it works. And, and I'm just happy for him. Um, I have the photo, I have the proof that goes back, you know, damn near three years ago of me saying, quote, this kid is going to blow the fuck up. And... Sure enough, uh, Jack Harlow did. Um, not only, you know, with What's Poppin', he's had, you know, with the remix with Tory Lanez, the baby, Wayne. Uh, he has another song that just came out with French Montana, Hot Boy Bling. He's working with Quavo in the studio. Uh, he's doing a lot of things. Uh, I even fucking Kendrick Lamar hasn't liked a tweet in two years and goes and likes, uh, the first thing he goes and likes is when Jack Harlow memed himself and uh, uploaded a clip of him way, way before I even discovered him um, as a kid. It's very funny and comical looking back now, seeing the, you know, then verse now, but um, him and Drake. So it's, it's just crazy to see Jack Harlow's success and rise. And especially, I, I just, I knew he was going to blow up. I was telling everyone in my circle, this kid is going to be a fucking star. And what happens? This kid is a star. Uh, and, and it's actually, here's the weird part. So Jack Harlow and Portugal the Man actually toured together, <laughs> uh, I believe like two years ago. Or a year and a half ago, it was a little like right, right before the pandemic, uh, and I was asking John Gurley, the lead singer of Portugal the Man. You can hear this on the first interview. I'm like, what was it like working with Jack? Like, why did like did you guys like make any music together? And he was like, yeah, we tried making some music together, and uh, you know, obviously they're thrilled for his success as well. Um, another person I I predicted, and here's the crazy thing: I discovered him in January of 2020. So, I believe the album, because Eldorado's coming out now, is it City of Angels, or is it, oh, no, it's Dropped Out of College, which came out in 2019. But I first heard, when I first heard 24K Golden, I knew that this kid was going to be a fucking star. Uh, the first song I heard, obviously, was Valentino, and I could see his hip-hop, it really reminded me kind of like a young thug a little bit, with like a little bit more rock, but then I heard the entire album, and ironically, the the least best song is the only song he has with a feature, and that's with Fetty Wap, um, but the whole album is really fucking good, I'm talking about Dropped Out of College, My Bed, City of Angels is a great song, the music video is amazing, Valentino, Games on Your Phone, Been Here Before, A Lot to Lose. Literally every song is a banger. When I heard this album, I knew that this kid was going to chart, this kid was going to blow up, and this was before he came out with the song Mood, featuring Ian Dior. Now, when that song came out, I did not, I mean, I knew it was going to chart, I knew it was going to do very well. I did not think, well, I knew it was going to go number one, but I did not think that that was going to be 24K Golden's 
first number one song um, just because he has such better music um, in the song the song mood is such a mainstream popish kind of song um, not talking down on them because that's what you have to do to make it nowadays unfortunately due to the music industry but hearing his first album I just knew it and I was a little surprised that Mood was again the song that really put him on the map but I'm happy that he's on the map El Dorado looks like it's going to be an amazing album with features I think with Lil Nas X um Kid Leroy, I, th I think a lot of uh, Kid Leroy, a lot of people. Um, it, it, it's uh, Ian. I mean, obviously Ian Dior and Mood. I have no doubt that that this album El Dorado, whenever this gets released, obviously this year is gonna be um, full of bangers, and I'm gonna predict that there will be at least one song off that album that will chart again. And I'm not talking about Mood. Um, but I'm very happy for 24K Golden. He did it. He, uh, it's fucking amazing. I'm really proud. Um, so I made that prediction in January of 2020. And then I think, what was it, like July or August it started. Um, well, Mood came out in like June or something. Um, but when I was making this prediction for 24K Golden, all I, all the music and the body of work that I that he's done was just dropped out of college, which was his freshman, his first album. This was before he did XXL, uh, Freshman List. This was all before that. I just knew he, he has it. And he's, he's so fucking young. And you can just see the influences and in, in that he listened to a lot of different kinds of music with a mixture of hip-hop and alternative and 90s and 80s and rock and uh, pop. And, and he mixes it. And he just does it very, very well. Another artist that I predicted um, was is Bazi. So Bazi is a very talented artist. I well, when Beautiful in Mind came out, I believe in twenty seventeen or twenty eighteen, um, I didn't know of him before that. But what I did predict, I don't have actual physical proof. I just have someone that I told. But I I when he dropped those two songs, I said to a couple people actually that his second album is going to be fucking incredible and sure enough it's amazing um the the entire album is actually very very good um and he actually put out a single uh, last year called crazy which is good um but the album is called or oh, in young alive he put out another single but in 2019 he put out soul searching and this album from No Way to I Fucking Love You to Focus with 21 Savage to Paradise to Live Forever, all bangers. He is such a talented artist, and I want you guys to be on the lookout for Bazzi, B-A-Z-Z-I. Um, he is another artist that I know is going to blow up. Um, I mean, he's already blown up, but he's just going to get bigger and his progression is just going to increase just like 24k golden just like jack harlow um it's actually pretty incredible um the progression that all of these artists are, are making and uh, again um it's just cool to see you know i i've never met any of them i mean i've talked with portugal the man and when they do come uh, to boston or whenever i get to go to a show um, you know, I'm already granted backstage, VIP, you know, all that shit. So I can't wait to meet them and, and definitely talk to them because that's going to be a, another full circle moment. Um, another artist, STG, uh, he just signed, I think, with Yo Gotti for like a, almost a million. I think it's on Instagram. Um, but when I heard him on Jack Harlow's album back in 2019, I want to say, um, I don't want to say, and this isn't a, a knock on him, I don't think he's going to be a, a superstar, but he is definitely going to be in the game. He has talent. He's really good. Um, and he actually just has a song with Lil Baby that, that came out recently. Um, another artist. I, I'm, I know I'm missing one person, um, but another artist that I knew was going to blow up is Lorne Daigle. 
Um, when I first heard you say, I thought it was Adele because the, their voices are very identical, very similar, but they're not. Um, but I knew that it was going to blow up. I knew it. And this was way before it charted. And it ended up being on, let's see, I know I have it somewhere. It ended up being on like, it was a hundred weeks at number one. Um, I'm assuming that's probably Christian or gospel uh, billboard chart, but still, a um, hundred weeks at number one. And it was crazy because I, I made this prediction and it just the song ended up becoming such a massive hit to the point where one time I was going to Florida, I get in the Uber drive, the Uber car at like literally 5 a.m. And what's playing? A Lauren Daigle song. Um, there's been times I go to the store, what's playing? A Lauren Daigle song. And then the one time that I go to New York City, of course she's playing at uh, Radio Radio City. Um, of course she's playing at that venue. So as I'm walking by, I look up and it says Lauren Daigle. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, if this isn't a weird sign from the universe, then I don't know what is. Honestly. <laughs> I'm really trying to think of the, this last artist that I predicted. And I, I should have written all this down. And I'm, I'm going to definitely add the proof with the artist that I did document. And that this is why I'm doing this now. Just to not only from you know my record but I think it's cool to predict people's success and also again I really wouldn't mind being an A&R for a major record label you know I I know talent when I see it I that's just I I have an ear for it <clears throat> I do want to say thank you guys so much for listening to today's show you know this show is brought to you by anchor.fm and spreaker.com both are amazing platforms applications and sponsors of today's show where you can create your own podcast without any microphones or mixers, because I'm not using any mics or mixers or lighting or stands or any none of that shit right now. Right now, I'm doing it all for my phone and my tablet, because it's easy and it's mobile. Um, and if you're not interested in making a podcast, that's totally fine. You can actually, you know, listen to your favorite show, like On Air with JT. Or if you don't like me, that's okay, because I want you to get that orgasm that you fucking deserve. So there's different types of genres and categories to fulfill your needs and give you that satisfaction and that orgasm that you deserve. For more information, go to anchor.fm or spreaker.com. Also, if you're an entrepreneur, business owner, content creator, or someone trying to promote your business brand product, uh, content and you just need to get it onto the next level look no further promote your content your brand your business on this show email the show directly at the justin thomas show at gmail.com once again the justin thomas show at gmail.com yeah I'm, I'm really trying to think of this uh this artist and i can't think of him like i it's like really bothering me now because it was the last one that I was going to do. <laughs> of course. It is cool, though. I do want to say, um, I mean, I guess I kind of predicted a little bit of his success. Um, but if you guys don't know, I, I went to high school with Black Bear, Matt Musto. He was a senior when I was a freshman, and I do remember him. Um, with his long, dark hair, and looked very different than he looks now. Um, but it's crazy to see his success. And especially, you know, because for a long time, he was uh, kind of more behind the scenes. I mean, he wrote, boy, he helped write Boyfriend for Bieber in 2012, and he's written for Mike Posner and a bunch of artists, hip-hop artists. But a lot of people know him with that song with Gucci. Um, but over the past couple of years, he's definitely spread out and become very mainstream and... Um, his last album just, I think, hit a billion streams with uh, that has Hot Girl Bummer on it. But I, I like Me and Your Ghost. I, I think that's a really good song. But shout out to Black Bear. Shout out to Matt Musto. Uh, 